thanks for coming. I was just thinking the other day that I think this is my very first uh, in-person presentation like in years. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I, I used to love doing them in person, and then we had to move to virtual, and I hated it. But then I got used to it, and I was looking forward to the in-person ones, and then I was thinking, oh, do I remember how to do this? I don't know, so I hope it, I hope it goes okay. <laughs> I'm really excited to be talking about this topic, though, and I really appreciate that the theme this week is creativity. And uh, so feel free to keep this informal. If you have comments or questions as I go along, please don't hesitate to just jump in. We don't need to wait for the, the formal question period. Even though I do have a formal uh, slideshow here. But uh, I think that a really important place to start is to talk about, okay, what's the difference between mental health and mental illness or mental disorder? Because I think that can be really confusing for a lot of us, right? You know, when people are going through difficult times, you often hear them say, oh, I'm really depressed. And uh, well, there's a, there's a difference, right? We can feel down and low and have depressive kinds of symptoms, but not necessarily have depression. So uh, I just want to talk about that a little bit at first so that we know the difference. Because it's really, we can be really mentally healthy and also go through some very, very difficult times where we are really struggling. And it doesn't mean that we have a mental disorder, so to speak. So. Uh, what is mental health? So mental health is just a, a state of well-being where we can cope with stressors reasonably well and um, do the things we can to the best of our abilities and contribute to the community. So how is that different from a disorder? Well, that's a, a disorder is more clinically significant disturbance. So this is where uh, we're having difficulty thinking straight. Maybe our emotions are getting the best of us. We are, we are having difficulty regulating ourselves and it's interfering with our functioning and the <coughs> stress level is very significant. Now that's not to say that even when we're going through regular difficulties of life that are really, really challenging, we're going to experience significant <coughs> distress then as well. It's really more about the functioning. So how do we know the difference? So it's really about looking at the level of distress or impairment. So when we're really not functioning very well at all, maybe we can't uh, make it into work, just really struggling, getting out of bed, those kinds of things. Um, and those are the, the kinds of issues that could lead to potentially a diagnosis, which I'm not going to get into because we, we don't need to talk about the disorder side of things. Let's talk about how to be as mentally healthy as we can be. So when we think about our mental health, it's important to to kind of look at what are the things that affect it. So it's usually a combination of kind of genetics, uh, environmental kinds of things. So, you know, we look at, you know, some of us are, are kind of <coughs> biologically programmed to be a little more on the anxious side. That's going to affect how we manage stressful circumstances. Our personality is part of it, right? And so personality is partly biological, partly our experiences that shapes who we are. Um, some of us, and I say some of us, I'm including myself in this, some of us are more easygoing. I'm definitely not easygoing. I'm about <laughs> as type A as you can get. So, um, but if you're easygoing and that's your nature, then you might kind of roll with stressors a little bit uh, more easily. Our environment is a huge um, part of what contributes to our mental health in this. I, I think I'm going to focus a lot more on that actually because I think that's really critical, particularly over the last little while. It's been a very stressful time for people. Uh, so how much stress is there in our environment? How much support do we have? And then I included our history. Our history is part of it too, that shapes us. So if we've been through a lot of really difficult things throughout our lifespan, that's <coughs> gonna affect how we respond to uh, stressors in our lives as well. I want to talk about burnout. I think this is a really relevant topic uh, these days. Um, so when we talk about burnout, we are looking at kind of physical and emotional exhaustion. Uh, it's 
our ability to kind of cope with, especially work events, we kind of associate burnout with, with work as well. Uh, so we, our ability to cope with the demands of our work is diminished, and we usually feel kind of powerless to achieve goals. So what are the causes? Workload, number one. <laughs> Um, the lack of control, that is, can be really stressful for people, right? And there's a lot of that happening, I think, for people, especially these days. If we're not feeling, a lot of us don't do our job because of uh, the recognition we get for it, but boy, is it ever helpful to have some, to know that you're valued in the job that you're doing. Um, if the relationships are kind of difficult um, at work especially, but everywhere, that can contribute to burnout. A lack of fairness, um, you know, when you feel like you're not, people are getting treated differently and it's sometimes um, hard for things to be exactly fair, but you know what it's affecting you. And when your values mismatch, right? So if your values don't fit with the values of your employer, uh, that can be a really challenging thing. You're often having to compromise what's really important to you in order to do the job. That's a very stressful place to be. So what are we going to look for to, in order to determine whether this is an issue for us? We always want to look at how are we feeling physically? How are we feeling, like how are we behaving? What are some of the actions we're taking? And how are we feeling emotionally? So here's a, a bit of a, there's a lot of information in this table, but I really like this. <laughs> You've seen this, Kim? I use this, I've used this. Do you? Another one. Yeah, it's a wonderful one. Yeah, it's really nice and clear, and it kind of outlines um, all of the areas here, right? So you you move, you can move through this spectrum um, from thriving to all the way to in crisis, and you can move back and forth. So this gives you some really nice kind of benchmarks to de to decide kind of how you're doing, how you're functioning. So if you're th when we're thriving, we're doing okay, right? We're sleeping okay, we're eating okay. Um, our performance isn't um, an issue. We can take things in stride. This is a great place to be. I don't know if we're all there very often, but it's nice when we get there. Right? Um, compare this to when the next step up when we're surviving. You know, things aren't great, but you know, maybe <coughs> we're noticing some headaches or muscle tension a little bit. Our sleep isn't as great as it could be. Maybe our eating's not good. We're feeling a bit irritated. Uh, our performance, maybe we're a little bit distracted. Um, all the way to struggling. So things just get progressively worse until you get into the crisis mode where you're seeing some pretty um, extreme sort of emotions and reactions here. So we might be um, you know, using substances to cope potentially having intrusive thoughts, not sleeping well at all. Um, and this is where you could get into maybe some more mental um, disorder kinds of things, depending on how long it goes on for. So you can go move back and forth. So uh, self-care, I, I want to talk a little bit about self-care. Um, and I don't want to talk about self-care, <laughs> actually, to be <laughs> <laughs> to be uh, more honest with you. Um, we all know how to do this, and I have this fire hose here because I just attended a, a workshop recently where she said, like, we all know how to do self-care. It's like trying to drink from a fire hose. It's like we get bombarded with these messages of, well, do your self-care, uh, to the point where we start to feel like we're struggling be because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. I'm sorry, it doesn't matter how much self-care you do, it doesn't change your environment. So um, you all know how to do self-care. We could all do more self-care. I think that's probably fair to say. Um, but it can feel invalidating, it can feel, like, it can feel pretty blaming, and I think it, it takes the pressure off other people, such as employers or whoever it might be, to make changes that actually will contribute to our well-being. It's kind of put all on uh, the employee to make the change. It doesn't fix anything. Do it, for sure. Keep doing it. Um, but we also need to look at what needs to change in our lives so that we can feel 
more healthy and well. So creativity, that's the theme for this week, which I think is a really great theme. I found this quote that I like. So what do we mean by creativity? I really like this. Creativity, as has been said, consists largely of rearranging what we know in order to find out what we do not know. So it's really about exploring and growing. In Latin, it actually literally translates into have grown. Um, it's really expanding things. So it's, it's really a form of expression that goes beyond the bounds of boundaries of language. Language can be included, right? We think about poetry or music, um, but even then it goes beyond the actual words. So it comes in many forms. We have to, I think, find the outlet that works for us individually. Um, I have a picture here of a, <laughs> of a potato box that I made <laughs> as an example. So this was a, a kind of a different way of exploring creativity. Okay, it didn't, that's just after I made it, it did not stand the test of time. <laughs> it is not, it's not a high quality um, product. But I felt really good uh, after having made this. It looks really good before I actually used it one year. Maybe I'll pull it out and try it again this year, we'll see. The door didn't open like I wanted it to. But, but I really got a, a sense of accomplishment by doing this. Um, and I had to think differently, so I really enjoyed it. Nature is another, uh, I think, way of exploring creativity. So I don't, I don't think that's on the list there, but I mean, there's the usual things we think about, painting, music, <coughs> photography. But I think we need to expand what we think about in terms of creativity. Where do we find the most beautiful works of art? Honestly, in nature, I think, you know? Like, it's the, that's uh, a beautiful place to be. And uh, actually, I have a kind of an embarrassing story that I'll, I'll share as an example. Because to me, it was a, a real indication of, of what's so helpful about creativity, particularly in nature even though it wasn't in nature, but it was related to nature. Um, I happened to stumble into this shop, storefront, or whatever it was, that specializes in, you know, the stone that they use for counters and stuff? So it had like tons and tons of these slabs on display. And I hadn't been in a place like that before. And I was looking around, <coughs> I couldn't believe how beautiful these slabs were, and there was one, I think it was called Brazilian um, uh, Quartzite, I think, and when I looked at it, it was a huge slab, and when I looked at it, it reminded me of like the Impressionist works of art. It looked like, a, like Monet, one of Monet's paintings, and I actually got really emotional. I, I felt like I was almost going to cry. It was so beautiful, and to me that was such a it's embarrassing. Like I'm looking at stone for <laughs> and I'm, I'm like trying to like keep it together. But it it really connected me on an emotional level to something beautiful. It really got me out of this thinking part of my head where we spend most of our time and got me to connect it to something emotionally that's very uh, pleasurable. Um, even though I was close to tears, but it was beautiful. So nature is beautiful. And I think sometimes we don't even know to take the time to look at it. <clears throat> so how does it help? Um, well, first of all, it gets a bit, does anybody here like have any particular areas that they really enjoy creatively? What do you have, what do you do, Donna? I do everything. You do everything? <laughs> happen when we're in get we're doing a sort of a creative activity is that we can get into this flow state. <coughs> can you relate to that, Donna? Well I was looking at the clouds the other day and I thought, you know, once you start painting you don't look at the trees the same way. Mm -hmm. You look at the trees and you see all the different hues and yes and the different shapes and notice the birds and yeah. you 
look at the world in a different way. Yes. Yes. That's right. Constantly. Yeah. Connects you to the yeah. moment <coughs> very differently. Yeah. yeah. And when we get into that state of flow, it's like nothing else exists. Right? You lose sense of time. Like you know, you you look at you, oh gee, I've been doing this for however long it is. Nothing else matters. And um, it's a really good feeling. It's almost like a it's almost like a trance state. Yeah, so it's like the theta wave state, which is um, a really beautiful place for us to be. We get into that theta wave state period, usually when we're driving. <laughs> we lose track of how long we've been driving. It's much nicer when we're doing something like this. Uh, and that's actually um, very helpful to us. It's very relaxing, uh, very pleasurable state to be in. Um, and we also, it's also the opposite of the fight flight state as well. So we, we sometimes refer to that as rest and digest. So that flow state can really be positive for us. Um, but as I kind of mentioned in my example with the beautiful stone, um, it also like, kind of spans that relationship between the body and emotion, right? So it kind of gets us out of here where we're worrying about the future and or ruminating about the past and we're like right in this moment and feeling the goodness of whatever it is that we're doing. Um, it, it also can foster resilience. So I have a, a picture here of a child doing something because if we ever want to know how to engage in creativity or play, let, just watch a kid, <laughs> right? They just do it naturally. Um, and, uh, and and usually they look pretty happy doing it if they're doing if they're just doing their thing. So I think there's something to it if we watch them. They're they're doing that for a reason. It can also facilitate social connection. So we are social uh, creatures for the most part. Not all of us. Not all of us need that social connection to the same degree. Um, but we are. You know, we have always sort of depended on one another for survival, historically speaking. Um, but it really helps us to get that sense of safety and security. Even if we're not doing the activity with people, sometimes um, we might do it with people. A lot of times, maybe. You might take a class or get together with a friend or whatever it might be. But <coughs> even if we don't, if we're doing it at home, we have something that we might feel excited to talk about with other people who share the same interests. So it can facilitate connection, which is really helpful to us. So that's what we can do for ourselves. And it's also things that we can help others do if, if we're worried about how they're doing. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how to support the people we care about if we think they're they're struggling. Um, and I, I think a really important thing to remember is that um, other people's mental health is not our task. Um, it, it's sometimes hard for us to separate what's my, like, it's hard to separate what's my task, what's somebody else's, because we really care about people, right? And we might feel that compelled to try to fix things for people, but it's really not for us to fix. Um, our mental health is our task. Other people's mental health, including people that we really care about, like our children and our um, partner, um, that's their task. Our job is really to support, maybe guide if, if they're interested in guidance. So what we want to do is even just kind of be there, notice. Uh, that maybe something is, is wrong. That's an excellent way to start. Um, stay close. Spend time with them if they're open to that. Ask them directly. Listen more than talk, for sure. Uh, I think it's really easy for us to get into that, oh, because like, we have great ideas, right? We've done our self-care. We know what works. Um, but if we get into that, okay, do this, fix this, and that's not necessarily what they need. They just need someone to listen. They need to know they're not alone, uh, that they've got support. So that's the main thing to get across. And just be sincere, be yourself. Um, and just
just to reiterate, remember that uh, having concern is different than having responsibility. So I think all of us will sort of fall into that um, sort of mode of wanting to fix or to kind of take on that problem for ourselves. You want to catch that and remind yourself, no, no, it's not, that isn't my task, it's not my problem. Uh, I'm going to just step back and be in the supportive role. And then I have some, some resources here. I included the article there that you <laughs> sent. That was a really good article, that last one here. Donna sent that. Um, it has some really nice information about uh, how creativity affects the brain. Um, and these other resources are it kind of, they have some screening tools, which I thought were kind of nice. And I, I saw those in the webinar that I took recently that was about vicarious trauma, compassion fatigue, and burnout. So some really nice resources on these websites as well. Yeah. So that's all I had to kind of talk to you about today. Any, any comments or questions? I really appreciated that um, last line that you put there about concern um, compared to responsibility is that sometimes as caregivers we take on far too much responsibility and it, it affects us um, in really challenging ways so I really appreciate um, being able to set that boundary that it's okay to be concerned about someone and assist them and help them and not necessarily take on that burden so fully yeah I think particularly working in the, the healthcare industry, right? We're surrounded by, you know, that we're not only caregivers in personal life, but we work in a caregiving sort of profession or uh, place. Yeah. I really like that fight or flight versus, you know, versus rest and digest. I will use that. Yeah. That is such a great comparable. Like yeah. That is, yeah, absolutely. It sounds so good, rest and digest. <laughs> I want to rest and digest. I want to do. too. <laughs> you can do some creative cooking to start and then do the resting and digesting. Get Christmas dinner. Get and Does anybody else have favorite creative activities? I just, um, I want to. Mandela puzzle at a, at a kind of event, and it's like black and white, and then it's just mm -hmm. like all these mandalas, and then so I feel like I got into that theta, theta yeah. point, um, just putting it together, and then when it was all done, and then I got out my markers and then coloring, like that was just fun. It reminded me of being a kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's nice, eh? When you find that. I find I stress myself out with those things because I think, what, what color do I use now? I have to pick my colors. Well, I have my five markers. So that's, good. Yeah. that's good. That's <laughs> good. Yeah. 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 Your choices, right? Yeah. Because I think that happens too. You can have so many choices in front of you. The choices themselves can become overwhelming. And you yeah. can see that with patients, right? Like they don't know what to do when we put like 20 choices in front of them. So. Yeah. But what a great opportunity <coughs> too, right? Like to work through that <coughs> and to just radically accept whatever choice you make. Yeah. Go with it, yeah. Right? But it, yeah, yeah. It, it depends what you want to accomplish, I guess, in that moment. Do I want to work through something or do I want to just rest and digest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's hard sometimes to fit these things in, too, right? Like, um, you know, I think giving yourself permission to make, make it a priority is, is part of it, too, right? Like, there's all these things that we have to do all the time, right? It's like, no, it, like, that deserves to be at the top of the, the list, too. I think that for a lot of artists, they have to have a purpose. Yeah. And with the art show, I had a purpose to finish the painting, right? And I get home now and I go, now what? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. now there's no deadline. Now exactly like like that happens, and it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And there's no deadline and no project. And, but if I have a specific project, I. Yeah, like it's easier to give yourself permission to do it sort of thing, eh? Well, like you have to do it. You have to do it, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
setting a goal. I guess that's a helpful thing to do, right? Yeah, I guess you can do. Yeah. I know. I remember the artist's way they talked about doing artist dates and mm -hmm. back in the eighties. I don't know if anyone else has read. Yeah, I have that. <laughs> yeah, they talk about doing artist dates and buying yourself flowers and doing something once a week, like something creative, like yeah, to inspire you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, work it in, right? Like yeah. Make make a point <coughs> of working it into your life, to your schedule. Yeah. Treat yourself like someone you're supposed to take care of. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cookie. yeah. Treat yourself like you would treat if you're put in charge of taking care of a pet or a child. Everyone in this room would go out of their way to make sure that that child got their medication or that that dog got their medication and got fed and on the schedule and everything else. But we don't do it for ourselves. So it's amazing. We don't. We don't yeah. have to But we we take care of other people. That take care of us. That's right. That that's a really good point, Kim. Mm -hmm. I like it. ask yourself, what would I do if this mm -hmm. was some so and so, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I would drive across town to make sure my daughter got her medication on time. Right. Right. But would I make sure I ate? Right. Do that later. Right. So we don't yeah. necessarily. Yeah. But you hear people sometimes saying things like, "Oh, I feel selfish doing that," right? Or yeah, "I'm going to be selfish today and do that." Well, but but honestly, if you don't do those things, then you're not as able to kind of be a support to other people anyway. So. Or you have external pressures like. Is your mom? Like, mm -hmm. This is my mom's toys. So when are you gonna paint that room? So I think that's that, that, that yeah. what I have to do. <laughs> yeah, there's actual judgment sometimes yeah. that we have to deal mm -hmm. with, or you know, there's so, a place where that guilt is coming from sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you want to at least kind of recognize that, validate yourself, and remind yourself, no, this it does make sense for this to be a priority. My well-being does matter. Even for them. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Oh, Hope we creative. <laughs>